Hello, ladies. First of all, I want to say happy Monday. And secondly, I want to talk about the topic of armor up. Okay, the name of the topic today is armor up. So when you are love bomb, you are filled with this intoxicating spirit, right? And the word intoxicating, I want you to just think about that word. The word intoxicating has the word toxic built inside, right? And if something is toxic, that means that it's got toxins inside of it, right? So what are these toxins? When you are with a narcissistic partner, those toxins are emotional, mental, and spiritual toxins, right? And so think about it. When you are, a person is intoxicated, what happens, right? There are a lot, a lot of things that go on. A lot of times people that are really quiet, you see them perk up and become very bold and out of character, right? You see a lot of things going on. And then one, another one of the main things you see along with being bold and out of character, they will, uh, part of that boldness, I guess I would say, they will start to talk about things that they normally wouldn't talk about. So some people, they become very affectionate. Uh, some of them start telling you like how much they love you. They'll start crying. And unfortunately, some people can become very aggressive when they're intoxicated. Well, when you are love bombed by a person who is a narcissist and you become intoxicated, right? You have a combination of being intoxicated slash euphoria slash uh, being uh, off balance at the same time. It's kind of hard to uh, describe, but this is all going on and everything is moving real fast, like you on a merry-go-round, right? At like an amusement park or something. And so, uh, like I said, with this intoxication, a lot of times, just like when people are drinking, uh, the people become, you become very free-hearted. So next thing you know, you are buying this individual all kind of stuff. Like you're going way overboard. It could be clothing, it could be electronics, just all kind of stuff. Cause you would think a person on the outside looking in would be like, well, what is going on with this woman? Why in the world would she uh, be doing that? And this the other way around, of course, if it's flipped over to where you've got a person that's a female uh, narcissist. But what happens is this intoxication, you get so filled up, right? With that spirit, that you start to do things just like a person who's literally intoxicated from uh, wine and spirits, as they say in the grocery store, right? Just like that type of individual, you become so overwhelmed that you start doing things that are just so out of character for you, right? And so uh, one of the main ways that a narcissistic partner was able to uh, get like that, have that love bombing spirit take over you, so to speak, is because they were able to disarm you. And when you disarm a person, what do you do? You catch them off guard, right? So you can think about it. If you want to <laughs> do anything to a person, all you got to do is be able to try to get them to get comfortable, right? And catch them off guard. And the next thing you know, uh, they're saying and doing things that they uh, would not normally do, right? Under normal circumstances, they wouldn't do, I would put it that way. So if you think about it too, if you were disarmed as a Christian, that means that this narcissist slowly but surely took off every piece of armor that you have on one at a time without you even realizing it. You see what I'm saying? You got so relaxed that you were just taking it all off. And you might be like, well, what kind of armor are you talking about? I'm talking about the armor of God. He's removed your shield of faith, right? And replaced it with a shield of hypervigilance, fear, and anxiety based upon PTSD, right? Which is post-traumatic stress disorder, right? And in the scripture, it tells us that perfect love casts out fear. So when we are with the perfect love of God, we don't have to worry about his loving us, causing us to be in a state of fear. However, everything about the relationship with a narcissistic individual is built upon fear. Everything in that relationship becomes fear-based, right? And so whereas God's, his perfect love casts out fear, right? And we don't have to worry about, we don't have to have that fear of abandonment, 
and being forsaken, a settler, right? And it is where he even reminds us, right? Just in case we get that thought in our mind, I will never leave you nor forsake you, right? So the next part of the armor that we are disarmed from, right? That's part of the armor of God. We got the sword of the spirit. And the scripture says that the sword of the uh, spirit is uh, sharper than a two-edged sword. And the sword of the spirit is the word of God, right? That's the truth. But then with a narcissistic person, they, they deal with the lies of Satan. And Satan was the first narcissist and he is the father of lies, right? And so how do they um, inflict the lies of Satan? Through false guilt, right? And they're piercing through the souls of women by making them believe everything that's going on in this relationship is your fault, okay? Now we want to look at the next piece of armor. That is the breastplate of righteousness, right? And the breastplate of righteousness, it protects and it guards our hearts, right? And remember the scripture says to guard your heart, right? Because I, out of it comes the issues of life. But when you are with a narcissist, nothing about your heart is guarded, right? So when they disarm you, they remove the breastplate of righteousness and they replace it by exposing your heart to never ending pain and by, um, keeping you in a sense of a state of false hope, which false hope, as we talked about before, is based on false promises and future faking, right? And so it's all of this, well, baby, we're going to be doing this. And as soon as I get through doing this, we, you know, we're going to get that house and we're going to have more children and we're going to get this whole renovation done in a couple of years. We're going to go and buy that house and buy that car. And a lot of the stuff that you were told in the beginning that you were promised it never came to fruition, or if it did, all of a sudden he got new supply and you were right in the middle of a renovation, remodel, slash remodel, and whatever you want to call it, major work on your house, and it's like, I'm leaving. You see what I'm saying? And everything you were doing, it don't matter what point you were at, that relationship is over and he's ready to discard you, right? So you get all that future faking, but what that does to your heart, it ends up keeping it open to never ending pain. And the scripture says, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. So all of this false hope based upon false prom promises ended up, you end up with what? A heart sick and uh, been in a heart sickened state, right? And a heartbroken state as well, okay? And so when you also think about it with your heart as well, your joy is killed, right? Because everything you value everything and everyone you value every person place thing or idea that you value is devalued which in turn over time it kills your joy now we got the next piece of armor and that is our feet which is shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace right but then when you are in a relationship with a narcissistic individual your feet are headed wherever their feet are headed. And even if yours are not, because you are in a soul tie and trauma bonded to this individual, all of these spirits that's in their soul, you are picking up in your soul. And remember the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. So whatever they've got going on in those areas, you've got it coming on to you. We don't get to pick and choose, like we're in the grocery store picking our produce, which one we want and which one we don't, right? So their feet, instead of being uh, shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace, their feet are filled with uh, dealings of envy, strife, and confusion, right? And they like to pit you against other women in comparison, or if you by chance have had the, the rare chance that you were able to exert boundaries when you were in that relationship with him, uh, they were able to pit, you know, you set up the boundaries and then all of a sudden they see you discussing the boundaries with the other woman that, uh, with some type of attempt was made. And then it's like, they will stand back. That individual will stand back and will glory in the fact that, oh, look, they're fighting over me. And it's one of those things that even you would think, cause a lot of men, you think that they would not be caught up in drama. Unfortunately for this type of character brokenness, these uh, narcissistic men are filled with drama, just like a whole lot of ladies. They like a lot of drama, just one person 
by themselves, unfortunately, okay? And this could be with the co-workers, uh, his co-workers, uh, your co-workers. It could be members of the congregation, people you are in ministry with, you name it, your family members, his family members. But just the idea that two or more people are into it over him is enough to start up the drama, right? So that's the part for the feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace turns into feet being shot with envy, strife, and confusion, right? And the scripture says that God is not the author of confusion, right? And so then the last people, well, the second to the last we would talk about, not the last, is the belt of truth. And every relationship that you're in has to be dealt with, with the foundation of truth, right? If we're, and that means that truth is Jesus. He is the basis of truth, right? And in the scripture, he says, I came that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came to give you life and I came to give it to you more abundantly, right? And then what does, who is the thief? That's Satan. And his workers are narcissists, right? They are his flying monkeys. His, he, Satan has demons as his flying monkeys. And then he's also have narcissists who are his flying monkeys, right? And when it comes to being with a narcissistic individual, instead of wearing a belt of truth, you end up wearing a belt of lies. And how does that happen? Because you've been disarmed from being love bombed. You've been disarmed and you're slowly taking off all of your armor and replacing it with false abundance, right? It looks like false abundance. It looks like abundance, but it's a false sense of abundance, right? Because underneath that mask they have on is saying steal, kill, and destroy you at all costs, right? And that means that your relationship is built on instead of being up on building built upon truth, right? With the belt of truth and the foundation of Christ is built upon lies, iniquity, and deception is what you're starting to wear around your waist, right? And it's just like a house that's built on sand, okay? And now we get to the last piece of armor that we're supposed to wear according to scripture, and that is our helmet of salvation, right? And with the helmet of salvation, that helmet that he's pulling off, that helps to protect our minds, right? And salvation means, of course, right, we know that our souls have been sealed and locked and we're headed to heaven with Jesus, right? And then when our minds are renewed, it also transforms the rest of our lives, right? Even the scriptures say we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. And how do we do that? We cast down imaginations and every high thing that's exalted against the knowledge of God. And we bring it into captivity, every thought unto the obedience of Christ, right? But what happens when you're with a narcissist, you become disarmed and you take off your helmet of salvation because he cre creates imaginations in his head, thus creating imaginations in your head, right? And this is all based upon being trauma bonded and soul tied to them, right? And also all of the drama and trauma that he has created to um, pervert your mindset, okay? Per there's a perversion of thoughts, perversion of events that takes place with him, perversion of your character and integrity, right? And then this is all done through uh, manipulation, the spirit of gaslighting, right? Spirit of projection, a spirit of belittling, and a spirit of guilt tripping. And then you also have triangulation, judgment, criticizing, contemptuous, condescending behavior. So you've got all of that and that's why it's so heavy. Like when you take that protection off that helmet for your head, your mind just becomes open. It, it's a battlefield. As Joyce Meyer's book says, battlefield of the mind is literally a battlefield of the mind, okay? And so you don't wanna be caught off guard, right? As you're healing, as you're trying to reclaim you after narcissistic abuse, you wanna make sure you are not caught off guard, right? So my uh, <laughs> charge to you ladies today, is to armor up and be ready. Have a blessed rest of your Monday. Until next time.